Good morning, and welcome to yet another episode of John Works Too Much. Now, you might remember this from a couple weeks back, um, but as is the habit of people, we're going to add more. So, we're going to add a shed over here. Now, right now, it doesn't look like much, but neither do I. One day I'm going to die, and I'll be, look a lot, a lot better. Uh, so, we're going to take these. These are called deck blocks, and um, we're going to make a foundation out of that, and then we're going to build a 10 by 12 shed. And here, pretty quick, you'll be like, John, Mike, you're amazing. And we'll be like, yeah. All right, so I want to tell you guys the story of Joseph because I think it's appropriate. I think that probably a lot of you don't know or maybe need to be reminded. All right, so <clears throat> let's review here. Abraham was named Abram. He was the first Hebrew, okay? Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Jacob later changed his name to Israel. Israel had 12 sons. Those became the 12 tribes of Israel. Pause. His youngest son was Joseph, okay? Joseph, when he was young, started having these dreams that the sun and the moon and 12 stars would bow down to him. And his family's all like, yeah, I think you mean mom and dad and us brothers. We're not bowing down to you ever, ever, little kid. Like, shut up, shut your stupid mouth. But he was his dad's favorite. And so, you know, there's the code of the many colors. I'm sure you've heard about that. So time passes, the brothers get very jealous because he keeps on with this talk. And they're like, you shut your stupid mouth. You're not the boss of us, you're not a real dad. And then they're like, we're going to kill him. So they take him off, and he's like watching the sheep or whatever, and then he's going to kill him, or they're, they're going to kill him. And then one of the brothers is like, maybe not kill him. Maybe we just like put him in a well for a little bit. So they put him down in the well, and, uh, and while they're waiting to kill him, some slave traders come by on their way to Egypt. And the, the brother that kind of cares about his brother is like, maybe we just sell him into slavery, and then we pretend like he died. And the other brother's like, we could take the money. So they take his coat with many colors and they cut it up <clears throat> and they cover it in blood from an animal. And they sell their brother off to slavery, at which point he goes to Egypt. This was a long time ago, in case you didn't know that. All right, so then they bring the coat back home to the, to the dad and to Israel and they say, hey, um, Joseph's dead, sorry, tough luck. We don't know what happened, but we found this, so, you know, sorry. He's very distraught, cries a lot, mourns a lot. In the meantime, Joseph becomes a slave. Does this seem right to you? That his own brothers like sold him into slavery because he was telling the truth? Because this is what happened. So then he gets sold into slavery. He ends up being a slave to this guy named Potiphar. Potiphar is like, Joseph's a good dude. He raises him up. He's second in command in Potiphar's house, right? Because he just does really, really well. Like Potiphar's up there and then right under him is a slave Joseph because this dude takes care of business. So. He's very responsible with his master's things. Time passes. His master's wife, Potiphar's wife, is like, me and you should have sex. And Joseph's like, that would be an evil thing to do because your master's been very good to me and now you want me to like have sex with his wife? No, I don't think so. She keeps on and on and on pushing him. Finally, she grabs him and pulls his clothes off and he runs out of the room. At which point she's like, uh-oh, I'm caught. So she yells, rape, rape, rape and accuses him of rape. At which point, what happens? This guy who was just speaking the truth that gets sold into slavery now is accused of rape and goes to prison. That's right. So does that seem right to you? Because it's not, right? He's the innocent one. He's trying to do the right thing. He goes to jail. Doesn't seem right. While he's in jail, he interprets dreams for people, right? The, the kings, the pharaohs, uh, Baker and his cup bearer, they both uh, come and, and they have dreams and they're like, we're so distraught about this. And he's like, I'll interpret your dreams, but you need to remember me when you get out of prison. And they're like, yeah, 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 of course we'll remember you. They get out of prison, immediately forget. So now he's stuck in prison. Guess what happens to him in prison? He becomes second in command. He's like a trustee because they're like, he's not doing anything bad. He's a real good dude. He's responsible with everything. We're going to make him second in command. So they raise him right up. Like, there's a prison guard, some warden or whatever, and then there's Joseph right underneath him. And you're like, hmm. What are the odds of that? Time passes. Pharaoh starts having these bad dreams, real bad dreams. He goes to all of his sorcerers and magicians and whatever. He says, I got these dreams. I want you to interpret them. They're like, absolutely. Tell us the dreams. He goes, nah, I don't think so. If you're so smart and if you really do have like a connection to the spiritual world, you tell me my dreams and then you interpret them. They're like, sir, no man can do that. He goes, I figured you were a bunch of liars. I'll tell you what, if you don't have me an answer by Friday, I'm killing all of you. And they're like, ooh, <laughs> we got to find up some, some trickery here. Anyway, they're scrambling. And the cupbearer and the baker are like, hey, uh, Pharaoh, we were in jail. Remember that? And he's like, yeah, I remember. And with this guy named Joseph, and he can interpret dreams. He's like, bring him in here. So they get him out of jail. They bring him up to Pharaoh. <clears throat> and then uh, Pharaoh says, I need you to interpret this dream. Joseph goes, okay. 
I'll pray about it. And he goes, but I'm not going to tell you what the dream is. He goes, that makes it harder. I'll pray about it. And so he does. And then he comes back to Pharaoh and he goes, all right, God showed me what your dream was. You had a dream that there was <clears throat> seven starving cows and they ate up seven well-fed fat cows. And he goes, I did have that dream. It was very disturbing. He goes, hold on. You had a dream that there was seven like very tattered up thin sheaves of wheat and they ate up 10 very healthy sheaves of wheat. He goes, yeah, that's my dreams. And he goes, what does it mean? He goes, let me tell you what this means. This means we're going to have seven good years filled with plenty. And then you know what's going to happen? Seven of the worst years in history. Famine everywhere. And he goes, well, what should we do? He says, here's what we should do. Here's what you should do. We should save everything up and like farm like crazy for the next seven years and build, build silos and like store up food that will last us for seven years of bad times. And he's like, you're second in command. So now all of a sudden he's second in command to Pharaoh, right? This is before there's any like world powers, superpowers. And so they, they do that and Joseph like applies himself to the task. He's like, I'm going to work hard. We're going to save these people because I don't want them to die. And so seven years of plenty happened. They store up all this food. Seven years of famine happened. The entire known world at the time is like, uh, we ain't got no food. But then they hear rumors. You know who has food? Egypt has food. And so they sell literally everything just to get food. At which point, Egypt becomes the first superpower, right? That's when the pyramids and everything, well, later, but that leads up to the pyramids getting built. So then uh, everybody's relying on Egypt, and Joseph's family, his dad and his brothers, come, and they're like, hey, uh, we need some food. And they don't recognize him because, you know, he looks like an Egyptian now. And then he ends up giving them clues and whatever, and he has mercy on them. And he says, come in and you stay in Pharaoh's house for the rest of your life. And they did, and they grew, and that became the 12 tribes of Israel. Anyway, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, sometimes you're like, why are these bad things happening to me, right? Why is life so hard when I'm trying to do the right thing? Why is God punishing me? Like, maybe he's not. Maybe God is putting you in a place and he's preparing you for such a time as this. And here's my, what i got to say, okay? This whole pandemic, which I know I talk about a lot, is a warning shot. You think this is bad? This ain't nothing. This is like stage one of the 10 plagues. This is like, ha ha, just get ready because bad times are coming. I'm just warning you. I'm just telling you, this is not the end of this thing. Bad things are coming. I'll tell you why bad things are coming. Because we refuse to repent. That's why. God is sending us this pain and these plagues and these things because we refuse to repent. Judgment is coming. I'm sorry, but it is. So you need to prepare yourself. And if you're in a place where you're like, God feels like he's punishing me for doing the right thing. Keep doing the right thing. Because he's going to put you in a place where you're like, man, God used me to deliver other people. He used me to save other people. And that's what life is about. Because God has all the days of our life written down in his book, which means we are the hero of that book. Okay, we are. We, God looks at us and he smiles. He sings over us. He rejoices over us. And he says, I am proud of you. I love you. And you are the hero of the story. Become that hero. So do it. We're going to build a shed. Hmm. You guys, huh? You haven't had enough yet? All right, so we spent, sometimes you spend a lot of time doing what seems to be a little bit of work, but it's very important. For example, we just built a foundation in some thick clay mud, and it was unpleasant. But now it's solid. Everything we built from here out, pretty easy, right? So we spent six hours doing this part, and we'll probably spend six hours doing everything else. I mean 28 minutes. So... You might think to yourself, self, will the roof be this tall? No. So since this stuff's in the way, what do we got to do? Well, what we got to do is we got to trim some limbs because sometimes you can't have any growth and get what you need until you get some stuff out of your way. And in this case, that stuff that we need to get out of the way is the branches. Now, in your life, it might be something else. Like maybe you got some bad habits you got to get rid of. And then once you get through that, then you'd be like, you know what? I got room to grow. That's important. So I want to talk to you guys about, what do you think, Mike? Prostitution. Prostitution. So we're going to go scapegoats today. Um, so a lot of you probably don't know where the term scapegoat comes from. Do you know, Mike? No, a lot of people don't. So unless you decide, like, I'm going to read the Bible because I don't believe what anybody else says and I want to see it for my own self, which is what I did, then uh, you'd be like, ah, how interesting. Nobody ever talks about this. But um, what would happen is every year they, they would uh, designate a couple of goats to be sacrificed for the sins of the people of Israel. Okay? This was before Jesus. So 
Jesus, all of the animal sacrifices before that were a foreshadowing of the fact that Jesus is the Lamb of God and Jesus died for our sins. He died in our place. It has to be somebody who's innocent and who willingly takes the punishment for somebody else, in which Jesus was innocent and willingly took the punishment. He was the only one that was actually worthy. But at the time, this was before Jesus, then uh, they would have two goats amongst the other sacrifices, and one they would kill, they, and they would sacrifice and burn it. And then the other one was called a scapegoat. Scapegoat is correct. Okay, so what they would do is they would lay hands on this goat's head, and they would cast all the sins of the people of Israel onto this goat, and they would take him out into the desert somewhere where he's going to die, and leave him there to wander around until he finally died. And that's where the term scapegoat comes from. Kind of an interesting thing. I don't know what the point of that was, but now you know. So whenever you're thinking, I'm going to make that person my scapegoat, that's kind of a mean thing to do. Like, that's a slow death. I'd rather take the one where you're like, dead, personally. <laughs> but I mean, I'm weird. All right, we're going to get back to it. Oh, hey, guys. Uh, yeah, so we had the foundation done last time we talked, and then we went ahead and framed this up. So that's amazing. It's been 28 minutes. <laughs> Uh, actually, how long has it been? You think, oh, like three hours, actually. We did a lot in three hours. Yeah. Like real time. Three hours. So we figured out how to uh, time travel. It's pretty cool. We do it in real time. So, like, if I want to travel ahead in time a year, it takes me 365 days to get there, 365.25 days to get there. And so, you know, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a slow process. Um, but that's how we do it, right? Now, if you're anything like me, you probably wonder, like, what do you call a book with no words, Mike? Uh, illiterature. <laughs> it's because you're illiterate, right? Such so as pictures, and that's all I look at anyway. Because obviously I can't read. I, I say that to people all the time, like I can't read, and they'll look at me like I'm so sorry. I'm like, I can read, you weirdo. <laughs> and I like I've just given them my book. Like I wrote this book. Okay, cool. By the way, I can't read, and they're like, um, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell you how many people really thought that's true. Um, so what are you gonna talk about, Mike? Literally anything. Okay, here we go. All right. A man who rolls up his sleeves rarely loses his shirt. That's really I wear short sleeves most of the time. Yeah, I do too. I really, I don't like long sleeves, I, even with a jacket or whatever. Like if it's cold outside, I'll just wear a jacket and a t-shirt. And as soon as I walk inside, I'm like, jacket's off. It's done. I'm over it. I don't like things on my <laughs> In my but, business, oh, check this out. So, a man who rolls up his sleeves gets burned. Uh, yeah, when you're a welder. So check this out. Like I know that a lot of people are tatted up. You're tatted up, right? Um, but I'm not, and I figure like if I want to fit in with a certain crowd, then I need to get tatted up. But I don't want to like put it on my arms because I have to look at my arms a lot. So check this out. I just want to get a turtleneck. So I'm just gonna just gonna tattoo my neck, right, all the way up. And I figure I'll probably put turtles on there. I don't know. I thought about putting the scripture in Leviticus where it says, do not tattoo your bodies, and then quote that and have that right there on my neck, but then nothing else anywhere else because I don't want to mess up my skin. <laughs> to all the people who ever said thank you on a stage, I just want to say, you're welcome. So we, uh, <laughs> we skinned this today. We'll take a quick walk. Not that far. Oh, look. There it is. And there's more on the other side. Okay, so... <clears throat> We just had a, we had a skeleton, a frame, two by fours, up, and then we decided we'd skin it. Now, this is kind of like building a body, okay? So I think about this a lot. Maybe you're like, uh, hey, I need to get some building materials up here, but you're out of stuff, right? You need to take some vitamins, because your body can't build what it needs to build in your body if it doesn't have the right materials. So it's all like, hey, I need a roof. They're like, uh, you want some more siding? You're like, no, I need a roof. I'm like, hmm, go fish. Uh, so eat your vitamins, it matters, right? Eat right, it matters. Uh, so there comes a point in your body when you're when you're growing, when uh, some people say you're just a, a bunch of cells, which my daughter's like, you're just a bunch of cells, which is true. And uh, you're this glob of cells, and all of a sudden, the decision is made. Like, I'm going to be the head. The other side's like, I guess I'll be the butt. And uh, and then from there on, for the rest of their life, you know, for 100 years or whatever, like, those cells, you're the head. And the other cells are like, I should have chose better. You know, because uh, your whole life, you're going to be the butt. Maybe some people like that. I don't know. I don't. So uh, maybe this is a good time for you to think about what you want to be in your life. Stop being such a butt. <laughs> That's all I got. Hello. And welcome to We're Done With This Shed. Uh, as you can clearly tell from our slides, we trimmed it out. We put siding on it. We got a roof on it. We put a door in. It's amazing. All right, so I want to tell you a funny story uh, because I think stories are funny. So me and my friend Alan 
were putting in a beam years ago. And I showed you guys how to do a beam. Basically, we had to like, you know, have a jack stud on either side, and there's a 20 foot span or something. We put in a, a double two by 12 and had to get up. It was one of those that was tight. They usually are. And so, <clears throat> let me tell you. Let's rewind. <laughs> Alan comes to me on whatever day of the job. It's hot. It's August. We're sweating like crazy. And he, and he looks at me and goes, John, I got slippy butt. And I'm like, I don't think that's a real thing, but I kind of think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> the next day he's like, John, it's turned into itchy butt. Then the next day he's all like, <laughs> he literally says this. He goes, I wish some big woman would just kick my legs back and powder my behind. <laughs> I'm like, that's hilarious. So I could tell it's getting real bad. Like every step is like, oh, 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 oh. He's, he's not happy. He's not comfortable. Fast forward. We're back at the beam, okay? I'm holding my side. I'm like, Alan, you got this? Alan's got the other side. This dog comes, puts his nose right in Alan's crotch, right? And Alan goes, you licking my, or you, <laughs> you sniffing my crotch, dog? And then right then, the dog circles back around and sticks his nose up in Alan's butt and immediately does this. And crawls, I'm not exaggerating, crawls back into a corner and is like looking at him terrified. And it, it was, if we could understand what this dog was saying, which he kind of did in his, whatever, body language. It was like this, dude, I sniff butts. That's what I do, I enjoy it. I, everybody I meet, every dog I meet, I go sniff their butt, every person that comes here, I sniff their butt. There's something wrong with your butt. You need to fix it, right? So <laughs> we were laughing so hard because this dog just looked horrified. Anyway, fast forward to that lunch. Alan's like, I gotta go to a CVS and get some powder or something. I'm like, all right, fine. So <clears throat> I let him off at CVS. We go to Taco Bell because I'm like, let's let's make this a uh, bad situation worse. So <laughs> Alan, <laughs> Alan goes to CVS and I see him walking through the parking lot like dumping powder into his pants as he's walking. And he gets he gets into Taco Bell and orders, he's just like, <sighs> like he looks so relieved, right? So later on, we walk into the house and the dog's still cowering in the corner, like later that day, like, you, you. <laughs> and, then, and then he like, and he comes closer to Alan and he, he goes around, sniffs his butt, and he jumps up and puts his paws up on his chest. He's like, <laughs> like, you cleaned your butt. I'm so happy you cleaned your butt, you're fixed. Now we can be friends again. Anyway, I thought that was hilarious. We have laughed for years about that story. Uh, this shed is done. We just put in a vanity inside. You can't see it, but we'll show you tomorrow. And then we're gonna do some lights and things like that. I'll have my electrician and plumber come work on stuff. <laughs>